Last week, you remember the Gospel was from chapter 8 of the Gospel of Mark, and it was the first prediction of uh, Jesus' death and resurrection. And you remember from last week that uh, Peter, who had professed that he was the Christ, the Messiah, was so shocked that he began to obey Jesus. In turn, Jesus rebuked Peter. Get behind the saying, you are thinking as human beings do, not as God does. The next chapter, chapter 9, today, uh, again we read of the second, we read the second prediction, Mark has three. Uh, and this time, I guess they learned from Peter, they don't say anything. They don't understand, and they don't say anything. But it's clear, Mark underlines for us how completely they do not understand, because when they get back, Jesus begins to, to challenge them about what they were discussing, following him along. And, uh, and so then he, he begins to talk about what real greatness is. Um, and this is an, it's an important lesson, and I suppose that's why Mark has this prediction three times. Um, you know, he, it's, it's clear that the disciples, you know, Mark tells us the disciples didn't understand. Mark is very harsh in evaluating the, the apostles and the disciples. I mean, I think if, if he used the word idiots, he would have used it. He's very, of all the four evangelists, he tells the kind of a brutal story about the followers, about their misunderstanding, their miscomprehension about what Jesus, who Jesus is, and what he means. And I think in that, we can, we can understand that it is hard to understand the depth of what Jesus is giving us. For us, especially in Washington, where um, who's the supervisor, and who's on first, and who's from elected is vital. Many of our jobs depend on who wins. So it becomes a, a, almost a blood sport in a way of, of seeing who can get ahead, who can get a better house, who can at the edge and education, etc. You know. And so for us, it would be it would be difficult for us to really understand when Jesus says, who wants to be first must be the last and the servant of all, to us it sounds ridiculous. Doesn't it? I mean, it's like, wait a second, that's not the way you get ahead in Washington, D.C. Not in my agency. Not on Capitol Hill. That's not the way it works. And I suppose it isn't the way it works, right? In maybe your agency. It certainly isn't the way it works in my agency. <laughs> but uh, but what 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 uh, Mark is pointing out, and Jesus is pointing out, is that the true liberation comes when you can put that aside. See, because then nothing can touch you. You know, I mean, once you once you've understood that. Everyone is your brothers and sisters. Uh, and once you've accepted that God will give you the grace to love and serve your brothers and sisters, I know humanly speaking it's it's a far reach, but but God's grace is there, then we can live in a different way. You know? Then we can see that they're they're uh, they they are our brothers and sisters. I was in the and I invite you to go into the ministry fair after mass. Uh, in Benedict Paul, and you'll see the different the, the people seeing their brothers and sisters from the people of the Dominican Republic, or Haiti, or Kenya, or Sierra Leone, or, or so many places, or our local. You know? In other words, that's what can really set me and you free. The vision of, of, of being the servant of all, because then there's no disappointment. You know? You can be truly victorious. Now, I know it takes the grace of God to do it, you know. But that grace is available to us if we aspire to it. But we have to take the first step. That is to say, we have to want to walk the way of Christ. And if we find it hard, 
you can see how hard the disciples found. Right? They, this Peter blows it the first time the disciples. Are you arguing about who's going to be on top? Who's on first? Um, so we can take a certain amount of consolation if it's difficult for us to understand. But let us not kid ourselves. This is a lesson that I and you need to learn. This is a lesson that will set us free. And so, he, and so Jesus takes an, an insignificant child, you know. You remember that the disciples had a history in the gospel of trying to keep children away from religion, serious work. But he says, look, if you accept one of these, powerless, not important, not powerful, as one as many, you receive me. And if you receive that, then you receive the one who So our invitation is to, and I, I, I urge you to, uh, to at least ask the Lord to give you the grace to see uh, the truth of what Jesus is saying. Of wanting to be uh, the servant of all. It's a real liberation. I thank God that in some ways God has forced me to learn at least a little of this. Uh, I told the story one time, I'll tell it again, maybe you weren't here, when I told you, about a, uh, a woman in my last parish who was a schizophrenic. And she was perfectly nice, but she never made much sense. And, uh, and like some schizophrenic, she talked religion all the time. You know, and she wanted to talk all the time. Uh, you know. And uh, one day, finally, uh, she's died, so let's I'm not tell the stories of it. She, I had nothing, I literally had nothing else. Most of the time, I could think of something I needed to do. I'd say, Mary, uh, you know, later. That day, I couldn't. And I said, well, I don't have anything to do. And I sat down with her, and she began to tell me her religious visions. And they were truly crazy, and they were truly wonderful. It was clear to me that she lived in her own schizophrenic way, on fire with the presence of God, in a way that I had never lived. I, I listened, I said, my gosh, this woman I've been avoiding, talk, or listening to, I should say, talking to too much, talk, but listening to, has, can tell me something about how God loves her. And she's on fire with that. And when I finally took time for that, I mean, she taught me the message that, you know what, she was, she was on fire with God's love. And God can teach you that, that same thing. <clears throat> From the person who cleans your office, you can learn some of the things you found this you know, I went to dinner last night with uh, so, uh, people who got married here, but they, uh, she cleans houses for a living. But, she, but she's also a member of the Legion of Mary, and she always goes door to door. You know, the Legion of Mary has a task of bringing people to God. And nothing deters her, whether the door is slammed or whatever. She and it's she never takes it personally. She's kind of wide open to doing God's will, as is her husband, who's also a member of the Legion of Mary. I am not the evangelist they are. I, am not. I want to be, and I believe God's grace can make me that. And I do believe God's grace can make you that. So why don't we make, we make a pact today that will ask for that grace to be wide open to God's work in our life this week.